everybody and thank you for tuning in to Nizzy Sports Chat. I am your host Nizzy and in this video you guys are going to be breaking down the matchup from last night where the Raptors ended up losing to the Chicago Bulls by a final score of 113 to 99. Tough loss for the squad last night you guys. Uh, obviously wanted the Raptors to take this one um, you know especially with Cleveland losing to uh, the Lakers in last night's matchup there would have brought us to uh, even. I think we're still one game back of the Cavs right now. Obviously we got that huge big time matchup coming up against the Cavaliers on Thursday. Um, you know, to try and tie them up in that sixth spot right now. I believe they will still hold the tiebreaker even if we win the game coming up on Thursday because they have beat us twice already this season. Um, we have yet to beat the Cavs yet this year. So, you know, like I said, massive game coming up on Thursday. We need this win desperately. Um, you know, I would say if the pa or if the Raptors lose this game um, on Thursday, our chances of that sixth seed are probably out the window, especially because you lose the ability to have that tiebreaker with Cleveland, which I believe, like I said, I'm pretty sure we've already lost it um, just because we only play them three times this season. Um, they've already beat us twice. So we're going to have to have a better record than Cleveland if we want to get into that sixth seed, you guys. Um, Chicago Bulls are at 42 wins, 29 losses on their season now. Raptors dropped to 40 and 32. So they're a few games back of the Bulls. I think they're two and a half back of Chicago as well. Um, so you either need the Bulls or the Cavs to go on a losing streak here to the end off the season. Um, Raptors are going to have to play consistent basketball down the stretch. I think we got 10 games left. I'm thinking the Raptors are at least going to need to go 7-3 and three to lock in a sixth seed. Um, you know, maybe even 8-2 and two to lock in the sixth seed. But I think 7-3 and three can get it done if we can make one of those seven wins against Cleveland here. Uh, coming up on Thursday, you guys, right real quick before we start breaking down the game stats. So if you can go ahead and like this video, if you like sporting content like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for more sporting content like this in the near future, we've been getting a lot of support lately on the channel, you guys, and I greatly appreciate it. We're going to keep coming out with as much content as possible for you guys. Uh, but without further ado, man, let's go ahead and start breaking down this 113.99 loss from last night's game versus the Bulls. Start off with some of the team stats here, you guys. Raptors didn't shoot too bad from the field last night, shot 44% as a unit. Um, the three-point shooting was abysmal for the Raptors squad, only shot 18%. Um, as a team from three-point land, I think we only made six three-point shots throughout the entirety of the game. I think we average about 12 per game um, as a team. So, you know, obviously those numbers got cut in half last night. Just the shot was not dropping at all for us in last night's matchup. Um, you know, the Bulls had a little bit better shooting stroke. They shot 48% from the field, 39% um, from three-point range, and 58% from the line. So they did pretty bad from the free-throw line. Um, we bested them in that department. We shot 86% as a group from the line. Um, you know, we out-rebounded them as well, 49-42. to 42. The offensive glass was tied up at 14 apiece. Um, the turnovers killed us in this one. We didn't even turn the ball over that badly. 12 turnovers for the Raptors. I don't think that's terrible. Um, you know, that's right around that 10 mark, um, like I said, which I th feel like usually you get 10 or less turnovers, you got a really good chance at winning the game. Um, so we weren't that bad. The Bulls just did phenomenal not turning the ball over in this game, you guys. Uh, five turnovers total as a team for the Bulls in the entirety of the game. You know, that's a big-time difference maker right there when you're keeping it in single-digit turnovers. So credit to the Bulls, you know, keeping the ball in their own hand, not turning it over a lot, giving us a lot of extra chances. Um, so even though we re won the rebounding battle, they won the turnover battle, which kind of, you know, balanced things out, allowed them to kind of have the same amount of shots as us. It wasn't really too much discrepancy in the shot totals um, for both squads in this one, you guys. Um, so, yeah, obviously got a little bit of help from the Lakers last night as well, uh, beating the Cavs, which helped out a ton keeping us uh, one game back. Obviously, if the Cavs would have won last night, we would have been two games behind them heading into Thursday night's matchup. Um, so at least that gives us an opportunity to tie them up for the sixth seed. Um, coming up on the Thursday night game there, you guys, so it should be a good one. Um, you know, and then as for this game last night for the first of the Bulls, we just, you know, didn't have a great game as a squad. Um, Fred Van Vliet struggled immensely in this game shooting. Shooting the ball, he shot only 7 to 22 from the field in last night's matchup. Um, you know, low 30 percentiles. Just wasn't really able to get a shot dropping at a high clip last night. Um, you know, Scotty Barnes really didn't take control of the game like I would have liked to see him do. He only had nine shot attempts the entire game. Um, you know, I would have liked to see him kind of be a little more aggressive, especially with a guy like Fred Van Vliet, who it's nice to have him back in the lineup, but his shooting stroke hasn't been there pretty much since, the, since we came back from the All-Star break, obviously dealing with that knee injury. Um, he's got some hernia issues. Um, you know, this guy's not going to be at 100% for the rest of the season. I do not expect Fred to play all-star caliber basketball for the rest of the season. He had pretty decent stat line in this game, um, but I don't think he's going to be shooting in the 40s uh, percentiles, you know, come playoff time. I think he's going to be a mid to low 30s guy. Um, he's going to make some big time shots at some critical moments for you, but I don't think he's going to be that consistent 20 to 25 point per game guy. Um, 
you know, at least efficiently. Like last night he had 19 points, but he had to take 22 shots from the field um, to acquire those 19 points, as well as obviously you're getting shots from the free throw line. I think he had a few four or five shots from the line as well. Um, you know, so that's never a good thing when you're taking more shots to get less points. Um, like I said, you know, him dealing with those injuries issues is definitely affecting his shooting quality right now. He's getting a lot of high quality shots. He's just not got his legs underneath him to be able to get a good, a good shot attempt up. A lot of those shots are falling short on the, on the rim. Um, especially in the ones that I was seeing last night, he had a couple wide open three balls that just ended up falling way short of the shot, way, sh way short of the mark to be able to make the basket there, you guys. Um, you know, so we're going to have to figure something out there. Hopefully Malachi Flynn's ready to rock and roll here soon. Um, cause we're going to need some, you know, scoring depth at the point guard position. Obviously Delano Banton hasn't been getting any minutes as of late. Um, and then having Malachi Flynn out as well as OG and then Gary Trent Jr. Last night, it was just a recipe for disaster for this Raptor squad. Just didn't have enough firepower to keep up with the Chicago Bulls in last night's game. Obviously they were hungry for that victory as well. After a few tough losses, they've been struggling. I think they were only three and seven or four and six in their last 10 games coming into the one last night. Um, you know, so they hadn't been playing great basketball themselves. They needed this win badly. They played with a little more desperation than the Raptors. Obviously we've been playing really good basketball lately. Um, you know, so hopefully the Raptors just, you know, bounce back quickly, get back on track here. Obviously we lost that one to the Lakers a few nights ago, bounce back nicely versus the Sixers, um, you know, lose a game last night versus the Bulls. Hopefully we do the same thing and bounce back big time in a huge game versus the Cavs, you guys. Uh, right real quick before we round out the video, we'll go ahead and rock through some player stats here before we finish it off. Uh, Ken Birch finishes off the night with 11 points, 7 rebounds, uh, 4 assists and 1 block. He actually had a pretty solid performance, probably one of his best performances um, you know, in the in the last little while, let's say probably since he came back from his broken nose, I would say this is his best performance so far, um, just for the stat totals anyways and what he's been able to do. I think he had almost 30 minutes of uh, time out on the floor as well. He shot 5-9 and nine from the field. So a nice efficient night from him. Hopefully those numbers continue to improve or at least stay around that, that margin and around that 11-7 and seven mark, um, you know, because we're going to need everything that we can get out of Ken Birch down the stretch here. Um, you know, he's got a pretty solid defensive game to him as well. He's one of those energizer bunnies, great getting the offensive boards for you. Um, so we're going to need him to step it up and play some big-time minutes down the stretch here for us uh, come playoff time. Then a Precious, Precious Achua had a bit of a rough outing as well, you guys. Only six points, nine rebounds, and one assist. Uh, shot three and nine from the field. Didn't make a huge impact on this game. Nothing like the game against the Sixers. Um, but, you know, he's going to have those up-and-down moments. He's still a young player. Definitely expect him to have a good game against the Cavs here. We're going to need him to step up big time. Um, you know, probably most likely coming off of the bench for us again. Should have Gary Trent Jr. back hopefully on Thursday night's matchup. Um, would love to see OG back in the lineup, but it seems like he's going to be sitting out for another week or so. Um, two nights off, I would expect Freddie to be playing on Thursday as well. Um, Scotty Barnes last night, you guys, quiet night for him. Eight points, six boards, five assists, and two blocks. Um, shot three and nine from the field. Would have loved to see him be a lot more aggressive. Um, in this matchup here, especially with Fred Van Vliet dealing with the knee injury, he's still gutting it out and playing through it. Commend Freddie for that. Um, but 22 shots for Fred is just too much, in my opinion, for a guy who's not got a good shooting stroke right now because of his injury. I feel like those sh those shot totals need to be spread out more to guys like Scotty Barnes. Uh, Siakam only had 14 shots. Uh, Boucher only had 14 shots, and he was scoring at a high clip last night. Um, you know, Birch was shooting efficiently 5 out of 9. Would have liked to see him get a few more. Uh, looks at the rack, you know, just little things like that. <clears throat> Obviously, Freddie was having a lot of wide open shots in last night's game. Um, just wasn't able to get a lot of those to go down. Like I say, he just doesn't have his legs under him with his uh, shot from long range right now. Um, so hopefully he can get a little bit healthier heading in to the playoffs, but it's not looking too promising. Pretty sure this guy's going to need some surgery in the off season here. Um, but nonetheless, you got to commend Fred's effort. Still finished with 19 points, six boards, nine assists, and two steals. Uh, like I said, 7 to 22 from the field is not going to get it done, but the dude's just out there giving 110% every time he's out on the floor. Um, you know, you can't harp on him too much for the shooting woes. Obviously, like you said, he's gotten through an injury right now, just trying to give every ounce of effort that he can to the squad. Um, so we'll commend him for that for that effort last night. You guys just need to see guys like Scotty Barnes and Pascal kind of take the torch a little bit and understand that Freddie's not got a hot stroke right now and, you know, take a little bit of that scoring load off his shoulders. Pascal was in tough waters last night. Um, still had an efficient night, 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. Shot 8 of 14 from the field. Um, but he couldn't get a lot of shots up last night because he was getting double teamed and triple teamed relentlessly throughout last night's game. Um, the Chicago Bulls made a big time point to shut down Pascal early and often and not really allow him to get going too much. 
Um, so a lot of those double and triple teams really ended up getting Freddie wide open. Like I said, he just wasn't able to hit those shots um, at a high clip last night. Um, but like I said, it would have been nice to see Scotty kind of assert himself a little bit more. Only taking those nine shot attempts in last night's game. He definitely could have doubled those shot numbers. Um, you know, and you probably would have been able to help the squad, you know, get closer to a victory there. I think he could have had a good 20 point performance if he would have doubled his shot totals. Um, cause no one can really stop him down low in the post. I mean, this guy's just got a phenomenal post game, uh, for a rookie, you know, and his shooting strokes definitely getting a lot better as well. So I want to see this guy be a little more aggressive in the next one here coming up. Um, you know, you had Boucher, like I said, with a big time performance last night, 19 points, 10 boards. Uh, one steal and two blocks, 8 of 14 from the field. That's why I was saying this guy could have took a few more shots last night and it would have been fine. Um, he was shooting out a nice clip for us, playing really good minutes coming off the bench. Um, Thad Young had a decent performance, four points, two boards, one assist, and two steals, uh, two of four from the field. And then you had Armani Brooks coming off the bench with eight points and a board. Shot three of seven from the field. Nice to see his shooting stroke get going a little bit. We needed a little bit of that added scoring, especially with... Uh, Malachi Flynn not being a go and Gary Trent Jr. out of the lineup as well last night. We needed somebody to bane in a couple extra buckets. Would have been nice for him to get a few more go in. Uh, but nonetheless, I've liked what I've seen from Armani Brooks on the 10-day contracts that he has signed. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he sticks around for the rest of the season just as a, a good three-point scoring threat that can maybe give you a quick couple buckets coming off the bench in the playoffs um, if we do decide to keep him, you guys. Um, and then over to the Chicago Bulls stats, we'll just go through the starters here. we got Vucevic had a great game, 19 points, 13 boards, 2 assists, chipped in a steal and a block on the defensive end, obviously. DeRozan and Levine uh, both had great games, 26 points apiece. DeRozan finished off with 5 boards, 1 assist, 1 steal, and 3 blocks. Uh, Levine chipped in with 6 boards and 6 assists. Caruso had 7 points, 2 boards, 6 assists, and 1 steal. And then you had Green with 7 points, 4 boards, 2 assists, and a steal as well. You had some bit of minutes coming off of their bench unit as well. Um, Pat Williams was back for them. I think he had missed a bunch of time with a broken wrist, so it was good to see him back in the fold for the Chicago Bulls. He's one of their better defenders as well. I believe he used to play with Scotty Barnes down in Florida State. Um, so two ex-teammates going head-to-head -head in last night's matchup. Obviously, the Bulls got the better of the matchup in this one. Uh, but nonetheless, you guys commend the Raptors' effort in this game. Obviously, is a back-to-back -back as well. Um, you know, those are always going to be some tough matchups there. We kind of finishing off a long road stretch with only one home game in there. Um, against the Lakers and then obviously we had I think what a five or six game road stretch before that just finished off another two games so that's eight eight road games out of nine um, you know so the Raptors are just getting a little bit tired here we got the Cleveland coming up on Thursday I believe that's on home court um, definitely need that one that's got to be a must win situation for this Raptor squad if we want to keep contending for that sixth seed down the stretch here we only got 10 games left in the season you guys were definitely going to need to make a good run here like I said I think minimum we need seven wins to be able to hold down that sixth seed Maybe even eight, but definitely minimum of seven, in my opinion, to be able to hold it down. Fingers crossed the Raptors can get it done. It should be a good, exciting finish to the season, you guys. Um, tough to lose this one to the Bulls last night. That falls, I believe, were two two losses and one win versus the Bulls this season now. 0-2 um, versus the Cavs this season. Hopefully, we're going to make it 1-2 and two coming up on Thursday. But anyways, you guys, that pretty well wraps her up for this one. Just to come up with a quick video kind of talking about the Raptors' loss last night and where we need to go moving forward here coming up. Big Cavs game on Thursday. Would love your guys' opinion in the comment section down below. How do you think the Raptors fared in last night's game? What changes do you think we need to make to be able to have success against the Cavs coming up on Thursday? Um, would love your guys' opinion on that in the comment section down below. That pretty well wraps her up for this one. Please go ahead and like this video if you like sporting content like this. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more sporting content like this in the near future. Thank you guys so much for watching, man. And this is Lizzie with Sports Channel. Oh, 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 oh,